In the previous video, we built this AI supervisor team using Flowwise. This supervisor node was responsible for delegating tasks between different worker nodes in our flow. Now in this solution, we're not using agent nodes at all. These are simple LLM nodes that generate some response and that's pretty much it. So someone responded on that video saying they would love to see this enhanced with something like context MCP to enhance the agent's abilities to access real time version specific documentation, making their output even more precise. So I wanted to create this quick video showing you how you can add MCP servers to your Flowwise agents. If you're new to MCP, it stands for Model Context Protocol. In short, it's a simple way of adding tools to your agents. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of these types of servers out there. And what's cool about these MCP servers is the service providers themselves, like GitHub as an example, would build their own MCP server with all the tools that agents would need to interact with their service. Context 7 is a massive repository with up-to-date documentation. This mostly includes documentation related to technical subjects like Next.js, Superbase, Tailwind, and so on, but it also has documentation on N8N and, of course, Flowwise AI. So let's say you want to give your agent the ability to access update information in real time, then adding this Context 7 MCP is a no-brainer. So let's see how we can add MCP servers to Flowwise by enhancing our software development team. I'm going to replace the software engineer LLM node with an agent and then we'll assign an MCP server to that agent. So I'm going to delete our software engineer and then let's go to add nodes. Let's add the agent node this time and let's rename this to software engineer. And from the model list, let's select chat open AI, and then I'm going to select my credentials, and for the model, I'll select GPT 4.1. Cool. Then let's add a message, let's select a system role, and for the system instructions, let's say, you are a full stack web developer, follow the instructions provided by the supervisor node. This is exactly what we had in the LLM node as well. But agents have one core difference to LLM nodes. They're able to call tools. So let's add some extra instructions. Carefully think about the solution. Use Context 7 to retrieve up-to-date documentation and ensure that the solution is using the latest versions and features of each technology. All right, let's save this. And just to make double sure the agent uses Context 7, I'm going to scroll all the way down and add the following to this input message. I'm simply going to say, use Context 7. The system message will be added to the top of the conversation and then we'll have the conversation in the middle and I just want to remind the agent at the very end to use context 7. That's all. This is optional, but if you run into any issues, you can always use this input box to add additional instructions at the end of the conversation. Now the question is, how do we add an MCP server to our agents? Well, that's really easy. Under tools, let's click on add tool. Then in this list, we can see a whole list of tools provided by Flowwise out of the box. Let's search for MCP. And we can see MCP specific tools, like the Brave Search MCP tool. We have access to a custom MCP, GitHub, Postgres, sequential thinking, Slack, and of course, Super Gateway. Now, obviously we don't see context seven in this list. So what we can do is select custom MCP, then under parameters, we can pass in the MCP server config. Each MCP server will have its own unique list of connection parameters. So we can just have a look at the documentation. All right, so when we scroll down with this GitHub repo, we can see all these different sections on installing this MCP server on different tools. Flowwise uses similar instructions than Claude Desktop. So whenever you're looking for the setup instructions for any server, just have a look at the Claude Desktop solution. So we may expand this. We get this object containing the MCP servers. Then we've got this object containing context sevens parameters. And all we want is this object only. So let's copy this and back in Flowwise, let's paste in only those properties. Then let's refresh this list of actions. And now we should see values. This means we've successfully connected to the MCP server. 
Now we do have to add both of these actions. So let's just click on each of those. And now our agent will have access to these two tools or actions. And believe it or not, that's all we have to do. Then let's hook it up to the condition node and let's connect it to our loop. Cool, let's save this flow. And in the chat, let's say, build an event planner app using Next.js. All right, so we got this response back. And what we really want to check is what happened in the process flow. So we can see the software engineer was called. Here we can see the list of available tools to our agent. So when we expand this, we can see that this was that resolve library ID tool. And in the second one was the get library docs tool. And we can also see that the agent decided to use both of these tools. Right, so we started off with a system prompt. Then we asked it to build this app. The supervisor told the software developer to, well, plan and build the app. Then we can see that our agent called the first tool, this resolve library ID tool. This is simply a query to context seven to retrieve the correct path within context seven to the Next.js documentation. And then the agent called the second tool. And this time it's asking to return the Next.js documentation from the correct path, along with the topic, which is effectively a search query and that of course returned the following from the context seven documentation. And therefore our agent is saying that this is how we can set up the new project using the latest Next.js app router, the following best practices and conventions found in the current documentation. This is awesome. That was super simple, right? We just took our software development team to a whole new level. Let's build one more example. I'm going to call this Flowwise Assistant and all I'm going to do is add an agent node. Let's attach this. Let's rename this guy to Flowwise Assistant. Then for the model, I'll go with Chat OpenAI and let's select GPT 4.1. Then under messages, let's select a system message and let's say you are a friendly AI assistant that answers questions related to Flowwise AI. Use the latest documentation from context seven to answer the user's questions. All right, let's save this. Then at the bottom, let's also add use context seven. And then finally, let's add our MCP server. So under tools, let's look for MCP. Let's select custom MCP and let's add our MCP server config. And of course we have to refresh this list and then let's select these two actions. All right, let's save this flow. And we should now have access to a powerful Flowwise assistant within Flowwise. Let's test this out. So in the chat, let's ask, what's the difference between chat flows and agent flows? Okay, we're getting a response streaming in, but what we're really interested in is to see which tools were called. And I can already see the two tools from the MCP server were indeed called. And if we expand process flow and have a look at the agent, these two tools were indeed called. We can see that the agent asked to get the library for Flowwise, and let's have a look at the second tool, and we can see it is indeed pointing to these Flowwise docs with the topic chat flows versus agent flows. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more Flowwise content, and then check out this other Flowwise video over here, where we built a supervisor team from scratch. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.